Mr. President, earlier this year you told us you had ordered your administration to cease and desist on payments to journalists uh, to promote your agenda. You cited the need for uh, ethical concerns and the need for a bright line between the press and the government. Your administration continues to make the use of video news releases, which are prepackaged news stories sent to television stations, fully aware that some or many of these stations will air them without any disclaimer that they are produced by the government. Comptroller General of the United States this week said that raises ethical questions. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? Uh, there, there is a Justice Department opinion that says these, um, these pieces are within the law so long as they're based upon facts, not advocacy. And I expect our agencies to adhere to that ruling, to that Justice Department opinion. This has been a long-standing practice of the federal government to use uh, these uh, types of videos. The Agricultural Department, as I understand, has been using these videos for a long period of time. The Defense Department, other departments have been doing so. It's important that, the, that they be based upon the guidelines set out by uh, the Justice Department. Now, I also I think it'd be helpful if local stations then disclose to their viewers if that's you know that this was based upon a factual report and they chose to use it but evidently in some cases that's not the case so anyway to guarantee that's happening by including that language in the prepackaged report yeah i don't you know look, I mean, oh you mean a disclosure i'm george w bush and i well some way to make sure it couldn't air without the disclosure that you believe is so vital uh you know ken i mean there's a there's a procedure that we're going to follow, and the local stations ought to, if there's a deep concern about that, ought to tell their viewers what they're watching. A Fox News alert, growing concern that the terror tirade in Iraq will soon be coming here to the United States. The seeds of 9-11s are being planted all over Iraq and Syria. You don't have to believe me. This is what they're telling you they're going to do. I am concerned, uh, and I think um, all Americans should be concerned. I guarantee you this is a problem that we will have to face. And we're either going to face it in New York City or we're going to face it here. Well, that is pretty scary. With more on the threat, Peter Johnson Jr. joins us live. Yeah, good morning, Steve. And I think all we have to do is look at the words of Colonel Kenneth King, who's the former commander at Camp Book of Prison in Iraq. Let's see his experience. And that's the fear coming to a city, including New York, as a result of what they're doing. It's important to understand who al-Baghdadi is. He's got a PhD in Islamic studies from Baghdad University. He's considered one of the most brutal leaders in the world now. His nickname is the Invisible Sheik. He was detained at Camp Boca, as you know, and then pushed out of Al-Qaeda in 2013. And now we know that there's a $10 million bounty for his death or capture. Eerily similar and perceived by many of the Al-Qaeda and former Al-Qaeda forces, including the people at ISIS, as the logical successor sure. to Osama bin Laden. And a lot of foreign policy experts are saying that the similarities are too eerie and too disturbing in terms of the way that Afghanistan was going in the 1990s to the way that Iraq is now proceeding in 2014. We only have to look at the radio address that al-Baghdadi gave last January. This is disturbing. He said, our last message is to the Americans. Soon we will be in direct confrontation and the sons of Islam have prepared for such a day. So watch, for we are with you watching. It's all scary about this. So that's the guy who's running that's ISIS the guy. right now. That's this the guy. is the same guy we had in prison and now and, 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 let him loose. And released and allegedly made a threat at the time that he left Camp Booker. Then we need to be on the defensive and the offensive to ensure safety in our cities. It's a continuing, sure. continuing battle in this war on terror. We are also learning more about the leader of this terror group, a man described as the new bin Laden, the heir to bin Laden. It turns out he had been in U.S. custody until 2009 over in Iraq, when he was then handed over to the Iraqi government as part of our troop drawdown. And then he was released. Now he has led this effort to create an Islamic caliphate, a nation state ruled by harsh, radical Islamic law and dedicated to killing, quote, non-believers and spreading its power as far as it can. Ken King.
is the former commander of the prison where that man was held until his release in 2009. Ken, thank you so much for being here. The most disgusting, vile terror group we've seen in recent history. Well, Jeff, the group's mysterious leader is a man known as Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Uh, he is so elusive that we only have a couple of grainy photographs of him. But al-Baghdadi now commands uh, several thousand men in Iraq and Syria, where he's trying to set up a state based on Islamic law. Al-Baghdadi is so feared that some people have dubbed him the new Osama bin Laden, and the US government has placed a $10 million bounty on his head. And here we go again. Every few years, the US government props up a new boogeyman for the masses to fear. And so the latest corporate mainstream media terrorist propaganda deception is in full swing. And this time it is in the form of a group called ISIS, which of course has deep occult meaning. What we are seeing here is another psychological operation being thrust on the masses to instill fear and tug at the heartstrings of every individual still stuck in the corporate elite government owned mainstream media paradigm. As we have seen in the past, the shadow government, elite, and mainstream media is able to propagate blatant lies and propaganda in order to create a fictional villain and enemy of America in order to achieve their New World Order agenda. Time and time again, over the past decade, the so-called terrorist group known as Al-Qaeda has been proven to be a creation of the CIA and continues to this day to be operated by the same forces. They have proven to be nothing but fictional boogeymen, along with Osama bin Laden, aka CIA asset Tim Osman. Among researchers and activists over the years, it is common knowledge that the bin Laden death was a hoax. The mere fact that the US government has never provided any evidence whatsoever proving his death should speak volumes as to the legitimacy of the great war on terror and the idea of terrorists in general and also 9-11. Bin Laden and Al-Qaeda is a fictional villain in the game of war by deception. And so is this new group called ISIS and its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. This so-called extremist group will likely be the scapegoat in the future false flag operation that will lead to another war. As we can see, the next 9-11 false flag fear mongering is in full swing and the usual culprits pushing this fear campaign is present as well. Republican South Carolina Senator, New World Order puppet and agent of evil, Lindsey Graham, is one of the key figureheads of this operation and agenda. Graham made his first fear circus go around in 2013 when he sounded the alarms of America being nuked. After Obama's State of the Union address, he stated, quote, the world is literally about to blow up, end quote. He was then used to push the fear propaganda for the Syria operation that was no doubt meant to start World War III. He was a key mouthpiece that pushed for Syria intervention, which was proven by thousands of activists throughout alternative media and social media networks to be a complete lie, which is why intervention was so widely protested, thus why the Syria operation failed. Graham publicly stated, quote, the United States could suffer a nuclear attack if it did not contain Syria's chemical weapons program, end quote. And, quote, I believe that if we get Syria wrong within six months, and you can quote me on this, there will be a war between Iran and Israel over their nuclear program, end quote. And last but not least, Graham told a crowd in South Carolina, quote, my fear is that it won't come to America on top of a missile, it'll come in the belly of a ship in the Charleston or New York Harbor, end quote. And now he is at it again for the ISIS Iraq operation. They use the same old puppet mouthpieces because they know the masses will not be paying attention or care. The next 9-11 is coming from here. That's very, that's a very serious... That's what they say and I agree with them. You think that we could have another... Oh, I think it's inevitable. He told us, he told me and the, and the soldiers that were around me, I'll see you in New York. That is just chilling. This man, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, has his eye on New York and his intentions are evil. I'll see you guys in New York. Yes, the fear-mongering, mind-control, corporate mainstream media, this is how they do it. CNN, of course, terrifying execution images in Iraq. Terrifying terror. 
terrorists. See, th these are the same old words. Uh, they use certain trigger words to evoke certain emotions from you uh, regarding, you know, anything relating to terrorism. You know, so evoking the the 9/11 trauma, uh, and that's what 9/11 was—a trauma-based mind control event. Now they can control the minds of the masses uh, since that event, from that event, moving forward until they reach their goal. They can they can literally control your mind and and play you like a fiddle with every event and every story that they put out using certain words and this is how mass mind control works through words that trigger fear and this is how it's done as you see here since isis came about this is what they are doing yes viewer discretion is advised so you see these are the tactics of the media and how the government and elite use the media to usher in their new world order agenda through these false flags through these psychological operations and remember under the 2012 ndaa and i covered this already but propaganda aka lying aka bullshitting the public is legal <laughs> it is in fact legal under the 2012 ndaa to lie to the masses to create to basically execute psychological operations on the masses and it is legal there's not a damn thing we can do about it we can't prosecute the media we can't do a damn thing because it is legal under 2012 NDAA and again remember the occult significance of the word Isis it's an Egyptian goddess and deity that is a favorite of the occult mysteries and secret societies that run this planet uh, so it's no coincidence here, this terrorist so-called extremist group called ISIS. And what do we have here? Is it also merely a coincidence, merely coincidental, that there is a contractor, U.S. government, called ISIS? Yes, how oh, coincidence, I'm sure. ISIS provides worldwide security, intelligence, technology, and training to government and private enterprises. Our Washington, D.C. office is located in Ronald Reagan Building. We are dedicated to supporting our national defense and security departments as well as government contractors and private business with mission and critical services performed by highly skilled experts in their fields. Interesting. U.S. armed forces, U.S. government, and prime contractors on the ground in such strategic environments as the Middle East. Uh, see our locations map at the bottom. Multinational forces, Iraq, theater-wide security services interesting choice word theater wide department of defense dod anything else in iraq sure iraqi voting legislature personal protective services iraq coalition for peace client contract supported organization as you can see now you know who is really isis who is really behind isis and this entire operation a steady buildup of particular stories that have a subliminal resonance with September 11, 2001. In other words, these subliminal resonance functions to trigger the trauma of September 11, and people begin to experience levels of fear. They're being re-traumatized in essence. The psychological warfare is usually issued through fear. There's your fear. And usually this fear comes out of a trauma, a trauma, a traumatic event. Any trauma, any, any traumatizing event, media uses this to, to its advantage. I mean, that's some, that's some serious mind control propaganda. If you all really think about it, this one event, this traumatizing effect of this event and how it has impacted our subconscious mind is truly profound. In terms of us, real quickly here, Osama bin Laden, the way that people were led to believe in this illusion was through computer generated images. What they did was they gave people computer generated images that looked like video games. And they said, look here, SEAL Team 6 went in and assassinated Osama bin Laden. And many people said, oh, wow, that's true. It happened. And officials say, experts say, that's all manipulation, too. When they say experts, officials say, someone speaking on anonymity, that's all media manipulation. It was fascinating to me because when I was, when I, I think it was ABC, they were this whole big production about SEAL Team 6, and they, they carried it on for, for, you know, they kept talking about it, like, for weeks. And now new reports, we have this new evidence, and we now have, uh, we have this new report, and, and, and here is, here is an ex uh, uh, here is what took place. Here's what we know. That's what they use. Here's what we know. And then they start showing this, these computer-generated images, and it looks like it looks like a video game. 
and they show this, you know, these group of seals, but it's really just a video game. It's virtual reality. And they go through and they're fighting in this, you know, the first floor to go up this to go up the stairs or shoot or something been loud in the sun. And they, you know, they, they have it's just all computer generated images. And they, they're talking as if this is an actual evidence and proof that this actually took place. <laughs> so y'all notice every single year around September 11th, September 11th, 2001, you start to hear stories about terrorism. Nothing ever happens though, right? We heard a new terror plot from Al Qaeda. We heard about this from the treasure trove of information that we got uh, from Osama bin Laden. Y'all remember that? Let's pull this next. We got a treasure trove of information and we have an idea that there's going to be a terror attack. And it's been going on for the last 11 years. Does anything ever happen? No. Why issue that programming then? That's the question. It's just programming. It's triggering. It's triggering the trauma of September 11, 2001. So this date is important because it ties Osama bin Laden to September 11. When people, when, when people say September 11, or when they say Osama bin Laden, there's a subliminal association that's made between the two. Because Osama bin Laden is said to be the mastermind, supposedly, of these terrorist attacks. There's four things I have to say before I move on. Four points. There's four stages to this. Number one, trauma. From the case of my grandmother, my grandmother being killed by a drunk crowd. That's the trauma. Out of the trauma comes forth fear. Out of the fear comes forth the externalization of power. And out of the externalization of power comes control. Y'all got that? The superimposed September 11, 2001. Same process applies. You ever have that feeling where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming. I know exactly what you mean. Now, all cults, all fraternities, all churches, all denominations have their symbols. We know the symbols and we know that what we're looking at, whether it's a church, a synagogue, a mosque, whether it's a policeman, or whether it's a fireman, or whether it's a nurse. We know things by their symbols. So fascism, what are the symbols of fascism? One might think it's a swastika. Actually, it is not. The symbols of international fascism are much older than that. And the key symbol, the cardinal symbol of the fascist movements of the world, is a bundle of rods with a hatchet in the middle of them. This is called the fasce, or the fasces. It's an old Roman symbol, but it even predates the Romans. Where do we find it? On the back of the Congress room. The Freemasonic monopoly of government positions continued for at least the first hundred years of United States history. According to a 1924 census, even in that year, the Senate had a membership which was 60% Freemason. But what worries me more is why, of all the symbols that you could possibly choose, the symbols for international fascism are there in the Senate room at the back. Now, James W. Wardner, in his book on Holy Alliances, says, our first president was a Mason sworn into office by the Grand Master of New York on a Bible taken from a Masonic altar, that of St. John's Lodge No. 1. The Bible used in the ceremony was brought there by John Morton, Marshal of the Day from St. John's Lodge, of which he was the worshipful master. Thus was laid the cornerstone of our country and forever of our government. This same Bible, used for Washington's inauguration, was used to swear in Masonic presidents Warren Harding in 1921 and Dwight Eisenhower in 1953. And time be dead, and what we don't understand can be used against us. It's the third time I've said that. <laughs> I'll probably say it three more times, see? In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in, to kind of catapult the propaganda. In the heart of this great city, we saw tragedy arrive on a quiet morning. September the 11th. September the 11th. September the 11th. September 11th. September 11th. September 11th. September 11th. September 11th. September 11th. 
September 11th, September 11th. September 11th, September 11th. September 11th, September 11th. September 11th, September 11th. September 11th, September 11th, September 11th. September 11th, September 11th. September 11th. September 11th, September 11, 2001. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. Saddam 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 Hussein. Continuing danger, hour of danger. Very, very dangerous world. A grave new threat. Horrific acts of atrocities. Murderous regimes dedicating to killing us. Tyranny and terror. Slaughtered thousands. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons programs. The deadliest of weapons. Terrible weapons. Nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Poison gas, torture chambers, mass graves, deadly technologies, radical ideology of hate, terror of threats, terror, 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 war on terrorism, war against terrorism, global war on terror, global terrorism, 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 terrorism. The evil terrorists. 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 Now, the sound that came through the window there in the hotel, we have indications that the B-52s could be on scene because that blast was so large. We go to Wolf Blitzer now at the Pentagon.